Hi, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Life Cycles and Traits. This is a student reader in Unit 4. Life Cycles, The Waggle Dance. Honeybees love to eat sweet nectar. Nectar is a sugary liquid that plants make. Honeybees also eat pollen. Pollen is a powder that plants make. Because they eat plants, honeybees are consumers in the food chain. Sometimes a bee will find a new source of food. When this happens, the bee does a waggle dance. This dance lets all the other bees know about her discovery. This dance gives a lot of information. It describes how far away the food source is. It also tells how much food there is and its direction from the hive. Working together. Communication is important for honeybees. They are social animals. They live in large groups called colonies. Their nest is called a hive. Bee hives can have anywhere from 20,000 to 80,000 bees depending on the time of year. The colony is very organized. Each bee has a specific job to do. Some bees do hive chores. These chores include producing wax and building the hive. Some bees guard the hive. Other bees leave the hive to gather nectar and pollen. Some bees tend to the young. This social structure is important. A single bee cannot grow or survive alone. The honeybee's life cycle. When a bee gets enough food and water, it will grow and develop. Its body will go through changes. To change means to make something different from what it is now. The changes all living things go through as they grow and develop form a pattern. This pattern is called a life cycle. A life cycle includes the stages an organism goes through on its way from birth to death. All life cycles include birth, growth, reproduction, and death. Reproduction is the ability of a mature organism to have offspring. Without e reproduction, a group of organisms would die out. Complete metamorphosis. Bees and other insects have a life cycle that is called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a life cycle with a change from an immature form to an adult form. The metamorphosis that honeybees go through is called complete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis is a life cycle with four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. One bee, called a queen, lays all of the eggs. When the eggs hatch, they are larvae. A larva is a young form of an adult insect. If the larva eat and grow enough, it will enter a pupa stage. The pupa is an inactive form of an insect. Its only job is to grow. After the pupa stage, the insect will change into an adult bee. The whitish objects are eggs inside the honeycomb. And then it says here that this adult bee has just left its pupa stage. Many different kinds of insects go through complete metamorphosis. All insects that go through complete metamorphosis have the same four steps. For example, mealworms are common in barns, flour mills, and kitchen cabinets. Mealworms are actually larvae of the darkling beetle. They come from eggs that resemble tiny white dots. These eggs are hard for predators to find. Mealworm pupa does not move or eat. All of the insect's energy is used to change its body from a mealworm into an adult. The mealworm spends one to three weeks in a pupa form. When the pupa cracks open, a beetle emerges. It is a whitish color like its pupa. The change into an adult is complete when the beetle turns reddish brown and then black. Female darkling beetles then lay eggs. This starts the life cycle over again. The black darkling beetle lives for about a month. 
it begins to search for a mate right away. Once paired, a female beetle finds a spot to lay her hundreds of eggs. After two weeks, the eggs hatch and the life cycle starts over again. Incomplete metamorphosis. Unlike honeybees and darkling beetles, some insects go through incomplete metamorphosis. This life cycle has three, not four steps, egg, nymph, and adult. Milkweed bugs go through incomplete metamorphosis. An adult female milkweed bug can lay up to 30 male orange eggs at a time. She lays them in small cracks on the milkweed plants. I'm sorry, not 30 male orange eggs at a time, 30 pale orange eggs at a time. After four days, tiny nymphs hatch from the eggs. The nymphs look just like adult milkweed bugs, but they don't have any wings. They also don't have all of their black and orange markings. The nymph grows a little bigger each time it sheds its outer covering. Shedding happens about once a week. Finally, the nymph turns into a fully grown milkweed bug with wings. It can now reproduce. This starts the milkweed bug life cycle over again. Part of the ecosystem. Honeybees and many other insects have an important job in the ecosystem. They are pollinators. Bees reach deep into the plant to gather nectar and pollen. This gets pollen on their bodies. When they move to another plant, the pollen falls off onto the new plant. Pollen is what makes seeds grow inside a flower. This is called pollination. Pollination is how many plants reproduce. Because of this, honeybees and other insects are part of the life cycle of many plants. With enough light and warmth from the sun, the seed will grow. First, its roots and stem begin to grow. Next, it will grow leaves. With leaves, it can make its own food from sunlight. Some plants will then grow flowers. Flowers produce seeds. Those seeds will disperse, which means to move away. The life cycle will begin again. Inheriting traits, beekeeping. Honeybees are important in our lives. Honeybees pollinate the flowers of many of the fruits and vegetables that we eat. They also make honey from the nectar they gathered from flowers. Because of this, some people make a living by raising beehives. These people are called beekeepers. Most beekeepers wear clothes to protect them from getting stung. This clothing includes a veil to protect the face and neck. It can also include gloves. Beekeepers also use a smoker. Smokers create smoke because smoke calms bees. Anatomy of a beehive. Good beekeepers understand how honeybees behave. This begins with knowing about the different kinds of bees in a hive. All colonies have three kinds of bees. These bees are the queen bee, worker bee, and drones. Beekeepers can tell bees apart. Honeybees have different body parts depending on their role in the hive. Structure is the way in which parts of put together Structure is the way in which parts are put together to form a whole. Function is the normal action of something or how something works. All organisms have structures that help them survive, grow, and develop. Each hive has one queen. Her most important job is to lay eggs. She is the longest bee in the hive. She has the largest abdomen. The abdomen is the back segment where her stomach is. She also has the shortest wings. So the queen bee is the largest bee in the center of this photo. Most of the bees in a hive are worker bees. All worker bees are female. Worker bees have different jobs. Some worker bees produce wax. This wax is used to build and maintain the hive. Some worker bees guard the hive. Other worker bees leave the hive to gather nectar and pollen. Bees have structures that help them perform their job. For example, worker bees have pollen baskets on their legs. 
They collect pollen with the baskets. They also have long tongues. They use their tongues to suck nectar from flowers. They have large honey stomachs. This lets them carry the nectar back to the hive. Male bees are called drones. They have different structures from the worker bees. Their only job is reproduction. Drones fertilize the eggs the queen lays. This means they make the eggs able to, they make the eggs able to grow and develop. Drones are almost twice as big as the worker bees. They also don't have pollen baskets, long tongues, or honey stomachs. Insect anatomy. There are many kinds of insects. Honeybees are insects. Darkling beetles are insects. Grasshoppers and ants are also insects. All of these insects have similar body parts. All insects have three body segments. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. All insects also have an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is a hard covering that acts like a skeleton. It surrounds their body like skin. The head is the front segment of all insects. It is where the antennae are. Insects use their antennae to smell, taste, and feel. The head is also where the mouth parts and eyes are. The thorax is the middle segment. It holds the legs. All insects have six legs. The thorax also holds the wings. The abdomen is the back segment where the stomach is. Some insects also have stingers here. Worker bees and the queen bee have stingers, but drones do not. Heredity. The exoskeleton is an example of a trait. A trait is a physical or behavioral characteristic of an organism. The honeybee honey stomach is another trait. Parents pass along traits to their offspring when they reproduce. This passing on of traits from parents to children is called heredity. Heredity causes offspring to have traits that are similar to their parents and to their siblings. Beekeepers are very interested in heredity. There are patterns that occur as traits get passed along. For example, some groups of honeybees are better able to survive through the winter. Other groups produce large amounts of honey. These traits get passed along in the bee's life cycle from the queen to the eggs that she lays. Variations of traits. Heredity explains why offspring look similar to their parents. All of the honeybees in a beehive have a similar color. They are light brown in color and have light and dark stripes on their, their bodies. This is because they inherited that trait from their parents. To inherit means to receive a trait from parents or ancestors. Heredity explains why baby giraffes have long necks, just like their parents. A long neck is an inherited trait. Heredity also explains why worker bees gather nectar and pollen from flowers. This is a behavioral trait. Another behavioral trait is baby giraffes eating leaves from tall trees. However, offspring don't look or act exactly like their parents. There are always some differences. These differences are called variations. For example, one baby giraffe might have a neck that is a little shorter than its parents or siblings. A worker bee might have wings that are a little shorter or longer than another working bee. Adaptations. Any trait that helps an organism survive in its environment is called an adaptation. For example, the bright colors of the honeybee have an important purpose. They help the honeybee blend into the colors of the flowers it eats. This makes it harder for predators to find it. The bright colors also warn predators that honeybees can sting. Because it helps honeybees survive, a color is an adaptation. Some individual bees have less bright colors than their parents or siblings. The more brightly colored bees might have a survival advantage. Predators are less likely to attack them. This makes it more likely that an organism will survive and reproduce. This is true for all organisms. For example, in a group of corn plants, individual plants are very similar. They resemble each other, but there are small variations. Some plants might be slightly taller than the other plants. Some plants might have larger leaves or longer roots. Some of these variations make it easier for certain organisms to survive. For example, 
Longer roots might allow one plant to absorb more water than the other plants. A taller plant might block the sunlight from reaching the other plants. The environment can also influence traits. For example, plants that don't get enough water won't grow as tall. They will eventually turn brown and die. So the corn plants on the left are tall and green because they got enough water. The corn plants on the right are brown and shorter because they didn't get enough water. Wow, I had a lot of fun reading Life Cycles and Traits, and I learned a lot too. I hope that you learned a lot and that you had fun also. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.